Hi there, Chris here. So it's finally time to start setting up my new long arm. I am going to be reconfiguring my space a little bit. The long arm previously was along this wall because it was a 10 foot frame and that was really the only place it would fit in my sewing room. Now with an eight foot frame, I'm gonna see if I can get it to fit right here. So it'll be a little more out of the way. I did get casters for the frame so that I can wheel it um, front and back a little bit. So when it's not in use, I could push it all the way against the wall. And then when I'm using it, bring it out a foot or so so there's clearance for the machine to move. So I've already cracked open all of the boxes, but I haven't gone through them yet. I did pull out all of the instruction manuals and read through them so that I know generally what I'm doing. Total of four instruction manuals. This is the one that came with the machine itself, which is super handy because it shows which manual to work out of and when. So you start with the frame manual, then move on to the machine manual. If you have quilt motion, you would move on to that, back to the machine, so you can follow this path to get successfully set up. And then we have the actual frame manual. I got an idler rail. There's an assembly manual for that. And then it also came with a 10 foot light bar. I'm not sure if I'm gonna use that yet, mostly because I don't think there is 10 feet from that wall to this bump out right here, but I'm gonna do my best. First up, I am going to unpack all of these boxes, get the trash out of the room. I don't have a lot of space I'm working with. And then we'll go from there. All right, I got everything unboxed for the most part and unwrapped. So now we are going to start on the frame assembly, which is this one. Actually, before we even start those instructions, I need to replace all of the factory installed feet with the casters that I got. All right, now we need to set the height. So we're gonna take out this, or loosen this set screw, it says. Hmm. How tall do I need to make this? Now I'm six too, so I'm gonna make this as tall as it will go and then adjust from there if needed. Legs are adjusted. All right, on both of the tables, we need to take off the tracks, it looks like. All right, that's disassembled. What's next? So now we're gonna attach the side legs to the tabletops. This is the left. This is the right. Mm 
attach one of the corner braces to the top left with four bolts. So that is right here. Got that. Move into a standing position. Now we're going to put a bracket on the right side. All right, got the bracket on. Let's move this up here. Now we can lift this up. Connect it there. All right, next to put the brackets on the back. Alrighty, moving along. I need these. Hmm. Ah, there they are. All of these again. A three millimeter Allen wrench. Ah, there it is. All of these again. Bottom track and these. All right, tracks are assembled. Loosely connect the tracks. Line up the front track as close to the edge of the frame as possible and tighten the connector bolts. Okay. Got that on. Now we put the carriage on. Oh, it's so smooth. Okali dokali rail supports. And then those. This. And that. So there's two rail types, ratcheting and non-ratcheting. The solid is the ratcheting, the open is the non-ratcheting. We're putting the non-ratchet side on the left. I do believe at this point, I also need to pull out the idler rail instructions. So the one that is straight up and has a lever to adjust it goes here. How much have I not been recording? So I don't know if that recorded or not, but I have attached the rail guides. So on the left hand side, you'll see that they're open, kind of like a Lego man hand. That is the non-ratcheting side. And then over here, it's a full circle and this is the ratcheting end over on the right. I do have an idler bar, which is an added accessory. So there are these brackets that I need to install. 
on the outside of the rear support so the idle bar will fit in those brackets. All right, so we got that. Now we're working on the bottom carriage and we're putting the channel locks on. So one of the channel locks will go on the carriage itself. The other one's gonna get installed onto the machine. So we'll put one aside. I think they're identical. Yeah. We need one of these bolts and a little washer. Remove the screw attached to the outside rear wheel on the bottom carriage. That is this guy. The rear wheel. Now this wheel has like a bump out. Just remember that that goes against the actual carriage. So now we're going to take a washer, put it here. And then I'm going to put that bolt in there through the washer, through the wheel. Oops. I need to use the bolt from the box because that other one is too short. And we're going to screw that back in. That would go towards the back. Then you simply plop it down and it locks it in. And that would be if you're wanting to keep this in the same, so you're just gonna be going perfectly straight front to back. Not gonna use that one that much, I don't think. All right, stop here if you're using a top plate and a home sewing machine. I am not. If you're using a quilting machine, continue to step six, installing the quilting machine. Ooh, fun part. All right, I am gonna take a quick break and then we'll set up the machine. All right, now the fun part, let's unbox the actual machine. I have read through the instructions already, so I kind of know what to expect. Something to note. I think it says it right there. Don't throw this box away. I know it's big, but you're going to want to hang on to it in case you ever need to send your machine in for service. Also, some of the packaging in here is built to help with the assembly. All right, let's see what we got in here. This is the display. Mm. Ooh, it's like a little tablet. Nice big display. Thread stand hardware, wheelbase hardware, encoder, tools, keep those handy, power cord and oil. And then these are the legs. So what you do is you take this piece of foam, set it down, and then I believe this sits on top of it. whole thing comes out of the cardboard and then sits on top of that. Actually, I think it probably needs to come out of the plastic. Oh, there are handles on it. That is super convenient. Okay, let's get this out of the way. We have to install the lower encoder, which goes on the carriage. So let me move the camera. So we need the encoder and probably the tools box. There it is. So there's the tools, more Allen wrenches. I like that they're color coded. And I like the handles. Those are really nice. That is like the world's smallest screwdriver. All right, now we need the encoder. So there are two encoders. And we need the one with the black spring. That is this one. So the spring back here is black, that one's silver. This one also has green on the tag. I think this one is purple, if I remember right. Yes, so the front one has a purple tag. So this is going to install the back left wheel. So opposite of the channel lock we just installed. This is the style wheel we have. We have dual wheel, dual wheel carriage with large wheels. We take off this outer wheel. Remove the outer outward facing wheel shown in blue and place the wheel on. Oh, I need to first lock collar screw. 
get that loosened. So you loosen that, but don't take it out. So you want this to be able to flop around freely. Take the bolt out of the wheel. Remember that the bump faces in. So we'll put this that way and reinstall it. I'm going to do this backwards just so I can get it on camera because I can't fit the camera behind there. But what you need to do is put this on the track. Let's not break that. All right, so the encoder should be touching, like it should be resting on here because the encoder is a little wheel and that tells the computer that the machine is moving. So now we need to take this for the spring and have it be pointing straight up and then tighten that down. Let's see if I can do this one handed. Nope. Okay. Hold on a sec. So we're going to make this point at 12 o'clock. So straight up and then tighten it down so it doesn't move. Here we go. And what that does is puts more tension on the spring so that the encoder always stays against the black bar. All right. Now that that's on, the encoder should be on the back. So we're going to flip this around. Channel lock is in place. Encoder is in place. We are going to plug this in and it feeds through this slot. It's just like an old school phone cable. All right, so that is there ready for the machine. Moving on to part two. Uh, if you have quilt motion, which is the automation, you'll want to do part one of that first, but I don't have that yet. So we're gonna move on. For this, we will be putting on the front and back wheels is on that end of the machine which means we need the wheelbase hardware and the brown T-wrench. So the packaging is built. You can see here that there's room to be able to put these on, which is very smart. How can you tell which is front and which is back? So the front wheel assembly has no visible screws on top and one rubber spacer. So these are the front and then the back, you can see those screws and it's just raw metal. Don't know. There's a difference in which way they face. Holes to the back, perfect. So it will go like this. Now we need these shoulder bolts. All right, that one's on. Now for the back, let me get the bolts out first this time. Holes to the back. All right, we're ready to lift it up onto the carriage, but let's get some of this stuff out of the way. The thread holder. It came with some sample thread. Finesse thread. Ooh, I like that green variegated. So there's a green variegated, a gray, a blue and pink, and tan variegated, and a tan. Very nice. All right, let's see how heavy this is. terrible. I'm going to have to lose that bottom shelf. I had a feeling. Oh, that's interesting. I wonder what that goes to. There was a random bolt floating around. So it's pretty tall, which means I'm going to lose my bottom shelf there. Had a feeling that was going to happen, so not a big deal. See what the next step is. We're going to loosen the set screws here. Roll the machine up and down on the bottom of the carriage several times so that the machine can settle and ride in smoothly. Then we tighten it back up. I think this will be a good height. So let's go back to our flow chart. We've done frame manual part one, quilting machine part one, quilting machine part two. We don't need to do quilt motion part two. So then we go to frame manual part two. So leveling the frame. So when I'm using it, it's probably going to be about here. I 
seems to be fine this way, but it is leaning forward. My floors are not the most level. Since I don't have the leveling feet on anymore, let's see what we can do with these casters. Oh, that's beautiful. That was something I never got down on my old long arm was having it be level. Nice. Don't need to adjust there. Okay, so we've got it level. Now for some rails. So we have two ratchet sections, three non-ratchet sections, and one hand wheel section, plus the idle rail. These are used to connect the two sections of rail together. This is the hand wheel, because it has a bolt on the end, non-ratcheting. The idle rail is also sold for all sizes of frames, so there are some extra pieces I won't be needing, but I'm going to keep them in case I ever need them. I need the four millimeter guy. Get all these taken out. All right, so we have our non-ratchet end. Slide this in and line up the holes. Oh, you don't take those out. Helps to read the instructions. Okay, so you actually leave these bolts in, and then you will slide it into one end of the rail. You're going to line up the bolts with the holes, and then what you'll do is actually loosen the bolts to cause tension. So then the bolt will be pushing against the rail from the inside. That way it stays nice and smooth. All right, so this is a non-ratcheting end. Nice. All right, there's one. I'm gonna do this one next, and this is the handrail. So to install the rails into the frame, you're gonna do the ratcheting in first. And you'll put it through that full circle. And then on the non-ratcheting end, inside the little claw, there's a bump. And that bump is gonna fit into the channel of the rail. And it locks together. Next, I'm going to do the idle bar, which sits right here. And that is two non-ratcheting sections. And then for this bar, it just sits on these brackets. Now, the idler bar, like I said, is an added accessory. The reason for it is so that you don't have to keep lowering, raising and lowering this back bar, because it's supposed to be, you know, just on top. Actually, you need to lower it a couple notches, but just on top of the bed of your machine. So your quilt is going to go under that, and then it's going to be taken up on here. So now that the idle bar is on, I need to put these on the side, which is going to hold that bracket in place so the bar doesn't fall out. Wonderful. The last rail is going to be this front one right here. All right, we'll put that into the ratchet side first, and then pop it into this side. There we go. Installing the rails, that part is done. Oh, the hand wheel. We need that long bolt. So we have our hand wheel. This is the handle. So the handle has 
a side that's kind of flush and a side that's recessed, the bolt goes in through the recessed side. And then it gets bolted onto the hand wheel. And just tighten that down. Even if you really tighten it, that still spins freely. Alright, so now we have our hand wheel. This is the hand wheel coupler. Slides into the middle. And then I should have a washer and a three-armed hand wheel knob. So the hand wheel goes right here. You have your coupler. And these teeth fit into the slots on the rail that are for the ratchet. And then your wheel. Then the metal washer. And then the knob. Sweet. And now the bungee cords. So the bungees are used to create tension left to right on your quilt, where the rails give it that front to back tension. So it has a little lever on top. Let's see if you can see that. And inside there, when you push the lever, it lets go. It looks like there's a little rubber piece, and that's what's going to hold your fabric without damaging it. So on these side rails, there are these two black buttons and the bungee part push it down and feed it through that and then on the end of this you'll put one of these little doodads you just squeeze it and push the bungee through there again and i think that's just a fail safe it doesn't say oh <laughs> your bungee clamps may have come with bungee stops these will not be used so I think for some other models, there's just a hole, and then this would be the stop, but this acts as a stop. So you don't need it. I'm going to put them on it anyway, just because I can. All right, let's do the other two. Bungees are installed. Now to fine tune and adjust the rails. So the idle rail should really just be, I don't know, maybe... So it just needs to be enough for the quilt to pass through underneath. So we're going to lower it quite a bit. And I think on the back side of this, it's numbered. So I'm going to crawl around back. H. Oh, well, I did a good job guessing. Okay. So we're going to go like I. I looks good. Tighten these set screws to keep it in place. Because I have the idle rail, I won't need to be adjusting this with every quilt. And then this guy needs tightened. This needs to go up because this should be level with this back one. So the quilt back will come off of this rail from the front over the top, and then under here, and then wind up on here. So you want the bottom of this and the top of this to be somewhat level. Now for the leaders. So these are the cloth leaders that you will attach your quilt to, your quilt back and your quilt top. There are three leaders in three different lengths, or three different widths, I should say. One, two, three, and the Velcro to attach to the rails. So you can see this is the shortest one. Pretty sure that's the longest one. Yep, and then that's the medium one. And they all have Velcro pre-installed on them, and that will go, that's the end that attaches to the frame. Comes with three rolls of sticky-backed Velcro. First thing you need to do is find the center of the Velcro. So just fold it in half and mark the center. I'm going to install this one first. 
move that out of the way. So starting from the center, which on the rails is easy to find because that's where they're joined. I'm going to rip this back paper in the middle. And we'll start in the middle. Some super sticky Velcro. Now to go the other direction. There's one. And then another leader goes on this bar and then this lower bar here. The idle bar does not get Velcro. Okay, all the Velcro is attached. Now for the leaders themselves. So the narrowest leader cloth, that's this guy right here, goes on this bar. So for here, we also need to find the center. I'm actually gonna mark it here as well, cause that will come in handy later. So I marked center up at the Velcro and down at the hem. This is where you're going to attach your quilt. So it's always good to know where the center is. Place the center of the narrow cloth leader onto the Velcro tape in the center of the take-up rail, right side facing away from the frame. I mean, the good thing is if you get it wrong, you can just rip it off and do it again, because it's just Velcro. I'd want it like that, I would think. We'll go with that for now. Repeat steps three through four with the medium cloth. Goes on the backing rail. And where'd my pen go? So this is coming over the top. Alrighty, and then the last and longest goes down here. This is what you would pin your quilt top to. I always find it a little hard to explain or label that the top rail is the lowest one or the one on the bottom. But that is because it is for your quilt top and it's not in relation to the actual frame. Okie dokie, the frame is complete. I don't know why we have this many screws left. That makes me a little nervous. So I had a whole bunch of screws and couldn't figure out why, and it's because I forgot to put these brackets on the center in the front and in the back. So I'm gonna do that now. All right, now to put that on the back. Now the frame is complete. So we can put these away. I'm going to hang on to all the instruction manuals since I have to save this box anyway. I'm just going to save it all in there. Let's see what the next step is. We're going to be working on the machine. I need to install the channel lock onto the machine itself. The channel lock goes on the rear wheel. Probably going to be easier to do that from the back. So it's going to go on this wheel here. We have our new screw. Goes in there, and then the washer, and then the wheel, and then put it back. All right, so that keeps it from going front to back. That's to help with making straight lines. Now we get to install the handlebars. So I need the handlebars and the brown wrench. Okay. So there is a clamp back here. We're going to loosen. Does it matter which goes on which side? Okay. 
Check out the helmet. Slide them into the cable. Sorry. Oh, okay. Slide them in the slot so the cables are on the bottom. So the cables are coming out of the handlebar here, so that's the bottom. I'm going to slide this back into that slot. And then this goes back up. And reinstall the screw. Adjustable, very nice. That feels comfortable. So we'll leave them there for now. These can always be adjusted later as you need. These also come in and out. So you can, yeah, that felt good. And we need to plug in I am just wrapping these around so that they aren't in the way. There's still plenty of give in them. Ooh, fun time! Get to install the display. So we need the display. Is the hardware in here too? Yep, it looks like there's two screws in here. That's perfect. And the cord. And we need the three millimeter wrench, which is the green one. Tilt the display back and line it up in front of the machine with the cable guide on the right. This is the cable guide. So it installs into these two holes here. There's one. Nice and snug. So it's in the top of the display unit. I think this one. And then this goes in the cable guide around back. And then plugs in right there. And you can adjust the angle. I don't see anything to tighten there. Beautiful. And now we are going to mount the thread stand, which is right here. It's all pretty much assembled, so we're just mounting it. It looks like it is skinnier at one end, wider at the other, so there's only one way it can go on the machine. And we need some screws, which is in this little box here. Looks like there's three shorter screws and one longer screw. And we need the two and a half millimeter wrench, which is the blue one. So the front and the sides get the short screws and the back gets the long screw. And the two side screws are underneath this foam. Easy peasy. Thread stand is on. And now for the upper encoder. We are going to need the actual encoder. Those are spare springs. And so we just have the encoder. Again, this is the one that has a silver spring here and it has purple on the tag. So this will be installed just like the other one, except it is getting installed. Let's see, we need the brown wrench and the blue wrench. The encoder monitor, the position of the frame, blah, 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 blah. Left rear wheel. Back over here. So I'm going to move the camera again. Right, I'm going to take the cord out just so it's not in the way. So it's going to go on this wheel. So again, we need to loosen this right here so that this is free to move around. I'm going to take off this wheel. Don't need this bolt anymore. So we have the encoder 
and again on the wheel the little lip stays towards the frame so the encoder bolt will go through there and then we reinstall the encoder is going to go towards the front of the machine get this wheel reinstalled And then again, we want the lock collar in the 12 o'clock position. So we're gonna push that up and tighten it back down. That way there is some tension to keep that encoder on the rail. Because that tells the machine when it needs to be sewing. And we're gonna plug our cord back in. And now we get to plug it into the machine. On the machine, the ports are labeled. So that one is purple, that one is green. That's where we're going to plug these in. So you simply take it and snap it in place. And then the gr green one from down below snaps right there. And the encoders are now installed. All right, now we get to plug it in. So it's got this handy clip on the plug to keep it from accidentally coming unplugged so move that out of the way except i think i moved it the wrong way so move it out plug this in and then it clamps so it's not going to come out i got myself a surge protector all right let's turn her on all right let's turn it on Well, that's, oh, oh, sweet. Oh, those are some bright lights. I love that. Oh, nice. So needle up, needle down. This is play or, you know, get it going. This adjusts the stitches per inch. Goes from 16 down to four. it's in the toolbox. We can measure. There's a calculator. Bobbin estimator. So when you put in a new bobbin, you refresh it and it knows about how long it'll run. Edge warning. So you would measure your quilt top. Oops. And how many hours you've done. There's precise mode, cruise mode, manual, and Based. That's what I was looking for. Oh, you gotta go real slow. Now that everything's all set up, I just need to finish a quilt top so that I can load it up and get quilting. Thanks for watching. See you next time.